Nate was, uh, was uh, a, um, a, a rambunctious kid, loved to do everything, was involved in everything, um, was ornery and uh, your typical kid growing up. He loved his friends. He loved being with his friends and sleepovers. And, and then in high school, he was very, very, continued to be very social, and it seemed like our house was always a big parking lot because everybody would come over. We got the diagnosis his junior year in uh, high school, and it, uh, again, we were just noticing some subtle changes in, in his movement and so on, so we thought we would investigate it, and we uh, finally got the news that it was this very rare neurological condition, SCA is the acronym. It was a, uh, you know, the pretty devastating knowing what was ahead of us. But in the back of our heads, we all thought, well, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. It won't, you know, ours, will, this particular situation will be different. Probably the way we dealt with it, we just tried to fill our lives and in particular Nate's life with with everything as much as we could. Things like go, taking a cruise to Alaska, which is something he always wanted to do. The and concerts, he, he combed the concert schedules to see, you know, which ones we could book. He had to quit driving, which was, you know, if we all think about that, losing the ability to drive losing his vision, having to take Braille um, in anticipation of that. Nate he just took it as another challenge. He didn't embrace it, but he accepted it. It was critical for Nate uh, to come to church every week. People took their time to, to talk with Nate and talk with us. And that really really helped us through getting through this process. Over the last few years, in particular the last year when things really started to get tough, you know, we, we um, had to put in a feeding tube. We had, he was on oxygen um, and so on. But again, he was, he still had that same attitude. Day by day, you have to decide what you're gonna, what you're gonna do. If you're gonna be happy, or where you're gonna find joy. I try to read things. I read the, the Bible verses. Uh, try to talk about it. I did join a mom's group who lost children, or a son or a daughter, and uh, I found their stories really helpful. It's not like you ever forget. It's, it's you learn to live with it. You we're able to laugh quite a bit about our, you know, all of the experiences and wonderful, wonderful memories. Uh, but at the same time, we have these moments of grief that kind of overwhelm you. I watch Gavin a lot uh, during the day, and it's been really fun because he loves all of Nate's toys. And I knew I saved him for some reason, uh, but I see a lot of memories when I see all those toys. During our time together, Doug and Annette's children, Katie and Megan, joined us for the conversation as well as their beautiful grandchildren. An example of Nate's great attitude was that uh, I did IVF to, to get both these babies to make sure they were healthy and didn't have ataxia. So I was talking to Nate about it and all the shots and stuff. I said, well, geez, ataxia is not that bad. <laughs> so it just kind of struck me that he didn't feel like he was, what he was going through was any, was any big deal. It's just what he was given. And he was dealing with it. He kind of prepared us for what life was going to be like without him. And I think he knew <laughs> how much we all would need each other. Nate would want us to do what he did. He would want us to live our life with joy and happiness and to find 
the light and the dark and to make sure that, you know, we didn't let our circumstances hold us down. So one of the things Nate always, and even before, I think he knew he was sick, he sent me a picture or a, a link to Bob Marley, uh, Three Little Birds, uh, Every Little Thing's Gonna Be All Right. And throughout life, he'd send me that once in a while, just to remind me. It's such a wise thing. And, even though you worry and worry and plan and everything's going to be all right.